We are on the mother effing mic today. This is so cool, okay? So if it looks a little weird to me holding my phone, I'm sorry. But this is bomb.com. This audio, this crispiness is doing something for me. But nonetheless, that's not why y'all here. So let's move on. If y'all have not checked out my first video of me doing a what? Check it out. A custom denim jacket. Then what are you doing? What are you doing? If you've watched my vlogs, you would know that your girl has just started. I don't know how many months we are into it now. It'll be a year come August 11th. I quit my job, my nine to five, and I went full throttle into doing custom clothing. And it started with my very first ever DIY video. So pause this video or after this video and definitely go check out my Kanye West inspired denim jacket. Now let's get into this one. Now today's video is going to be surrounded and themed around Barbie. I'm going to be taking you guys step by step of what it takes to do a custom denim jacket. So step one normally starts out with me doing the planning process. Before we get into the nitty gritty of the planning of the Photoshop process, I gotta show you guys what I got from Etsy. So let's do it. First on the list are these Barbie push buttons followed up with an array of bandana colors. And for added glam of Barbie, we're gonna be using these rhinestone and glitter hot pink Arnon letters. And of course we have to implement the Barbie logo. So we're gonna be using this Barbie Arnon decal. And girl, hello. Who is Barbie without her rhinestones? So I'm also gonna be adding this diamond trim. For a bit of a shock factor, I'm also gonna be adding this bandana Barbie head. Now for spice, we gotta add the Louie with a dash of iridescent spray paint. All right, now I think we're ready for Photoshop. Let's do it. Okay, step one, the planning process. Girl, you need this. Let me tell you why. When you have a plan, you tend to be a little bit more productive. You have a clear cut goal and a map and a guide and you don't have to think so much. And also it lets myself and the client know what's up with the jacket, what to expect. We're both on the same page. They can make their changes and then we can move forward accordingly with the jacket. So if you guys haven't already peeped, this is going to be a Barbie theme jacket. When planning for a jacket design, I like to source out materials and things that I think that I'll need to really bring out the theme of the jacket. So Etsy was my best friend in this case. I like to use this mock-up not only as my model but also as my opportunity to play around and test out new techniques that I wanted to do without risking the possibility of f***ing up this jacket. I've messed up in the past but I embraced it but you would have never known. But yes I don't like doing that so we're gonna make sure we plan accordingly. Purchasing the Etsy items ahead made it a little bit easier when it came to designing this jacket in particular, but then it had a spark. I remember my mom had just recently purchased some bomb ass glasses that had rhinestones hanging off of them. And I'm like, duh, Barbie glitter rhinestones. I'ma add that to this jacket. So upon finishing the design, what I like to do next is send this over to the client, get their approval, let them know that this is their opportunity to make any changes, let them know the progress of what has already been done. If all is good, then all is well, and we'll move on to the next step of actually customizing this jacket. Now comes the fun part, my favorite part, which is actual custom details. So we're gonna start out with stitching down a little stitchy stitch. But pause, before we get too ahead of ourselves, I just want to give you guys a clear cut before jacket moment so you guys can see what has already been done. So I already dyed the jacket, so unfortunately you guys won't see this in this video. And I also already distressed it. But nonetheless, let's get to the fun stuff. So we are finally about to get started on this jacket. But what I like to do first before getting too ahead of myself is I like to sit here and take a look over on Photoshop at our final design. And I asked myself, okay, what can be step one realistically? I have to put in consideration that I am going to be doing a couple of Arnons on here and I know I'm gonna be doing spray paint and paint. So what I like to do first is I identify on the photo, where am I gonna have my Arnons? So I'm gonna have pretty and pink on the arm and I do have a splatter of white paint. 
Knowing where to start is really important because I have in the past made the mistake where I would do my spray paint and paint work first just because I'm excited and then later regret it when it goes time for me to do an iron on just because it doesn't want to adhere to the fabric because now there's a barrier between the fabric and the iron on and it, the glue is just it's just not going to stick to that. So make sure you do that step as well as you look at your design before you do it or if you freestyle in it, you just put that into consideration. So we're going to start off with our pretty and pink iron on. I also think I'm going to go ahead and iron on our Ken and Barbie and we're just going to do it. The time has come. Are y'all ready? Let's get it. So we're going to start out with these pink glitter iron on letters that we got from Hobby Lobby. And the phrase we're going to be going with is pretty in pink. I'll be the first to admit I love me some iron ons. They're really easy to use and they can easily in a snap of a finger amplify a look. All it takes is a hard press, 30 seconds of your patience, and an arm setting of no steam. And you in there boo, voila. Now it's time for the nitty gritty. If you don't have a sewing machine, you can still do this because I went months without a sewing machine and I did everything by hand. But luckily, those days are over. So I like to do the hardest parts first, like the parts that are a little bit more tedious or a little more cramped. So we're going to start out with this panel on the front of the jacket. And if you missed it, this bandana was purchased from Hobby Lobby. What I typically do is line the edges up, up against the panel of what I'm going to be stitching down. Just as my holder place, just because fabric can move and it can be a bit challenging trying to line things up. So after I do that, then I'll go ahead and take some scissors, line it up to the other side of the panel and cut straight up. Then it's time to stitch away. So I start out with a straight stitch just to hold things in place. And when I customize jackets, I don't go for perfection. I go for imperfection because I feel like it makes the jacket feel more authentic and more unique. So don't put too much pressure on yourself if you're looking to customize denim jackets as well or if you want to make something for yourself. If your lines aren't straight, who cares? It's, it's art. We're barred at that. Now we're moving on to the collar. So what I like to do is cut literally just a strip of the bandana and we're gonna stitch that down in place as well with a straight stitch and follow up behind that with a zigzag stitch. And you guys, are you peeping how easy it is to do this design? You wanna know why? Cause we did that Photoshop creative process. Bam. Oh, that's bomb. Then we're moving on to the pocket. I'm gonna be using this hot pink bandana that was also purchased from Hobby Lobby. And then it'll be along the same lines of the same technique that we use for that panel for this pocket we're going to be measuring out the width as in how long does it need to be as well as how long it needs to be and as security we'll be pinning it in place and then following that up behind as well with a what you guessed it a straight stitch and followed up with a zigzag one so once we're done with all of our stitch work, we're going to try the jacket on for reference just to see how everything is looking and laying and then move on to our next step. So next I'm going to be ironing down these Barbie and Ken name tags. Remember, these are iron on, so it's really simple. All you have to do once again is set your iron on no steam, press down slightly for about 30 seconds, and you win there. Boom. I do also want to mention that I do go behind the iron ons and I like to stitch things in place for double security. Then it was moving on to one of my favorite parts, which is adding these push pin buttons. I really love these push buttons for the vibes, the aesthetics, the retroness it just brings to a jacket is doing it for me. And as a reminder, remember that most of these items were purchased off of Etsy. Some were purchased from Hobby Lobby as well, but all the items in this video will be linked in the description box down below. So make sure you guys check it out. So now that we're done with all of our stitch work and all of our iron ons it's time to move on to the spray paint and paint. This is the part where things get a little crazy, but in a good way. This is also the moment where mistakes happen, but this is the moment too where you have to learn to embrace those mistakes. Because you're going to be splattering paint and spray paint all over, things are not going to fall as you want them directly to be. But guess what? That's what makes it unique. And remember, creativity is allowing yourself to make mistakes. Art is knowing which one's the key. At least that's what Google said, y'all. But anyways, moving on. So I went in with a dash of iridescent blue spray paint, followed up with some white paint for splatter with a bit of gold for just what the hey, I thought it was cute. 
Then it was Sharpie time. Let's get to writing on this jacket. There is a small bit that I did not film because I forgot to set the camera up, but you guys get the gist. So I'm gonna tell you what I did. I just wrote out the word Barbie numerous times. I also wrote out the word Barbie in bubble letters with a quote saying, you're so fake, you make Barbie look real. Then I'm gonna add this quote that is Barbie. I just thought it was cute. <laughs> And we're going to paint that in with some what? White paint. I'm going to be using one of my favorite brands, Tulip Fabric Paint, to paint this phrase out. And to save on time, we're going to blow dry this paint because who got time for that? Now it's time for the little details that matter. I'm gonna be adding in these silver eyelids along with these flat hot pink studs. And to help secure my eyelids, I'm gonna be using these eyelid grommet pliers. To puncture the hole, I'm gonna essentially be using my thread scissors to puncture it. And then I'll be taking my eyelid, pushing it through the little hole that we just created with our thread scissors. And then I'm gonna be taking the grommet pliers and pushing that into place to make sure it's super duper secure. Then it was time for studs. So I'm gonna be using these diamond studded teeth to add a little sparkle. And to take the sparkle to another level, you already know, we're adding the diamond trim. The way I go about diamond trim is simple. What I like to do first is measure out the length of each piece that I'm going to need. And to help secure my diamond trim, I'm gonna be using this Gorilla Clear Grip Glue. By the way, if you guys are still here and you're enjoying this transformation, go ahead and give your girl a thumbs up. As you guys see, there is a lot of steps and we have a lot more to go as we still have to do the back. But keep watching, we almost there. Next, we're going to be adding the silver cone head studs using some pliers, and it's really simple. You just puncture your fabric with the studs because it has like two little teeth. You use a flat surface such as like a knife or scissors or like knee pliers, and you just bend those two teeth in. It can be a little bit tedious, but the outcome is so worth it. Then I'm going to be adding the phrase black written all on the top panel of this jacket as reference to our design because she is a black girl and she's a black Barbie, period. And before getting too ahead of ourselves, we got to go ahead and secure the Barbie logo and Barbie head. Mini update from after we did our Barbie logo and our Barbie head. I went ahead off camera and I did the diamond trim on the jacket just because it was pretty much the same process as we did on the front. And then to almost finish off this design because we're almost done, we're just going to sew down this Louis ribbon. And then after that, we just need to do our signatures. And um, I think we'll be well on our way. <sighs> It's a lot of work. I'm thinking of also adding in maybe some studs on the back, but I don't know. We'll see where we go, but let's get down to stitching this stuff. So I went ahead and already stitched down that Louis Vuitton ribbon, and we're just gonna move forward with doing the studs, just because I feel like it would really give this jacket that extra little edge that I'm looking for. So we're gonna stud it down, and then we're gonna move forward with securing it with the what? Jazz Originals name tag. Hello, I gotta tag it. I'm gonna stitch that down really quick with my sewing machine, and follow that up with my three Jazz Original signatures. And now it's all about finalizing the process and making sure this jacket is in tip top mm -mm -mm shape. Now let's get into these results. Ooh, it's been a journey, but we have finally made it to the end of this video. I want to say a huge thank you to you guys who stuck around to the very end to see the transformation and see the complete process of what it takes to create a Jazz Originals. Now, I am absolutely in love with this jacket so much that I want to duplicate it and make one for myself. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. But let's get into some lessons learned and some things that I probably want to do a little bit differently 
if I were to do this again. So here is the jacket, our Barbie theme denim jacket. Now, as far as the front, I'm pretty happy and content with the front. Um, I probably would have did my bubble letters over on the arm that says it's Barbie bitch a little bit differently. I probably also wouldn't have splatter painted it. I kind of liked it when I was in the beginning process before I splatter painted it. I felt like it looked a little bit more clean. It looked a little bit more on the expensive side. I probably would not have did the arn on that said pretty in pink, but I think it definitely does add some texture to the jacket. As far as things that I love, I absolutely love the rhinestone. I love the spray paint. I love just the colors. I love how it's not doing too much with the fabric. I think it's literally just enough. And in terms of the back, I think... Um, I think I would have did a little bit more. I feel like I could have went a little bit more ham, but I just don't know what I could have did. But overall, I think the jacket is bomb. And I just really love that I got that tag in there that says Jazz Originals. That part is just so cool to me. But um, nonetheless, I think she's cute. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this jacket. Is this gonna be a jacket that you guys are going to be recreating? Would this be something that you guys would purchase from someone like myself? I do also customize denim jackets, so make sure you guys check me out on my Instagram page at Jazz Originals. All the information will be linked down below as well as the materials that were used throughout this video. I also wanna mention that over on my Jazz Originals Instagram page, I am running a giveaway. When I reach 2,500 followers, I will be gifting a free custom denim jacket. You pick the theme and I just make the design. Bam, easy transaction. Once again, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you guys like it, please hit the like button down below. It lets me know that you guys want more and I would love to create more for you. Check me out also on my own personal Instagram account at Eclectnista Jr. All of the links will be listed down below. Now let's try this jacket on and get cute. And here we are with the pictures. I think these photos came out bomb.com. Your girl was trying to be on her editorial with the inside out denim jeans with the denim on denim. I think it's cute. But nonetheless, I hope you guys grasped something from this video. I hope any questions that you have had in one of my vlogs or on my Instagram page has been answered throughout this video. I also hope that you guys are inspired to want to recreate or create your own custom Barbie denim jacket or a denim jacket in general or maybe you never thought you could do it and now you want to do it after you see it's not really about a talent thing it's more so about just experimenting and having fun remember you guys that art is in the eye of the beholder and do with it what you shall and on that note peace out you guys and thank you so much for watching